Hello, I'm Mark and welcome to a very special episode of Shark Files, the series where we explore the wide world of sharks, skates, rays and chimera. Today, we're going to look at five things that you might not have known about the second biggest fish in the sea, the Baskin Shark. One of the most mysterious and impressive behaviours of Baskin Sharks is their torus formation. In these multi-layered rings, groups of males and females swim together for hours or even days. Interestingly, most sharks in these toruses aren't feeding, which raises the question, what are they doing? And there are a few theories, but the most likely explanation is courtship, a slow motion version of speed dating. Observations show equal numbers of sexually mature males and females in these groups. The sharks interact with each other, gently touching fins and bodies, suggesting these formations are an essential part of their mating behavior. Another fascinating behavior observed is breaching. This involves basking sharks leaping out of the water and crashing back down with a spectacular splash. Although it's a relatively new behavior we've identified in Baskin Sharks, it was initially met with skepticism. Back in the 1950s, scientists thought reports of breaching Baskin Sharks were mistaken for dolphins or even thresher sharks. Originally, breaching was believed to be a way for sharks to rid themselves of parasites like lampreys. However, this explanation seemed incomplete. When large males were seen breaching, it was suggested that they might be displaying to attract females. And interestingly, we've since observed females breaching as well, which hints at this behavior might be a way for them to signal their readiness to mate. Despite their enormous size, basking sharks feed on tiny crustaceans called copepods, which are so small that to see them in detail, you would need a microscope. So how does such a large animal feed on such tiny prey? It's actually quite simple. Baskin sharks swim with their mouths wide open, allowing water to flow through, and they have specialized gill rakers which then filter out these tiny organisms. The mystery remains how Baskin sharks locate these minuscule creatures. Some scientists theorize that the sharks use heightened senses of electroreception and smell. Baskin sharks have numerous electroreceptors in their snouts, which might detect tiny electrical discharges emitted by moving copepods. And additionally, they might be able to smell dimethyl sulfide, a chemical produced by zooplankton. In the waters where Baskin sharks are found, scientists have discovered 2.5 times more copepods compared to areas without the sharks. This suggests that Baskin sharks are actively seeking out and foraging in the densest, most productive patches of plankton. Basking sharks are enormous. In fact, they are the second largest fish in the world, beaten only by the whale shark. The largest recorded individual, found off the east coast of Canada in 1851, was measuring 12.27 meters, just over 40 feet. However, most Baskin sharks are not quite that large, typically averaging around nine meters or 30 feet in length. It can be hard to picture such massive creatures swimming in our waters, especially since they are one of the more mysterious and elusive shark species. For the second largest fish on the planet, Baskin sharks remain quite elusive and mysterious. This makes it difficult to find and study them, which is crucial for their protection. So where are these giants and why is locating them so important? Until recently, essential habitats for Baskin sharks weren't a focus in conservation efforts. Understanding the areas they select is key to identifying regions that need better management and protection. Baskin sharks are highly mobile, making it challenging to track their movements and understand their aggregations. One approach to finding Baskin sharks involves studying ocean fronts the boundaries between water masses with different properties. These fronts are convergent zones where plankton accumulates, making them ideal feeding grounds for Baskin sharks. Satellites can help detect these fronts by identifying sharp changes in water temperature. However, 
Ocean fronts are vast, so pinpointing exact locations for basking sharks within these areas can be tough. Community engagement and observations play a significant role here. The Shark Trust's Basking Shark Project, a citizen science-led sightings database, helps track these elusive creatures. Historically, the English Southwest was a hotspot for basking sharks, but sightings have declined. However, there have been sightings further north on the coast of Ireland and Scotland. This could be due to shifts in zooplankton or simply because the sharks are not always being spotted. Currently, sightings have increased in other areas. For instance, Lofoten in Norway is a productive region with high concentrations of zooplankton and other species like whales. So since 2019, there have been 480 observations in Norway suggesting that Barson sharks might be following the nutrient-rich Norwegian currents to various hotspots where zooplankton is abundant. Thank you for watching this episode of Shark Files. You can help us learn more about these gentle giants by being on the lookout for them at the sea or on the coasts. Baskin sharks are present during the summer months between May and October. So get out there, keep your eyes peeled for one of the British Isles' most iconic species. And if you like this video, please don't forget to click the like button below and subscribe to our channel. Take care and see you next time.